<clears throat> okay, now I'm um, going to discuss very much personal question, which is about uh, how I myself started to teach people Kriya Yoga, when it's happened and why it's happened. And uh, honestly speaking, something I'm ready to say, something else maybe I'm not ready to say, but um, you know, for me, um, Kriya Yoga meditation in the Bija Mantra tradition was and is so huge and important that, you know, um, um, in the 90s, in the end of 20th century, I spent, okay, something like 15 or 20 years in, in India, and mostly it was my Guru's ashram, Yogi Ramaya, whose ashram was in very south Indian, Tamil Nadu state, and in Sai Baba ashram. Okay, and um, you know, that time in 90s, so end of 20th century, <clears throat> I was learning Kriya Yoga from Yogi Rama, and uh, it was um, so huge that, uh, huge, in, in, you know, Huge experience to be with my guru and huge um, just, um, uh, you know, responsibility to teach somebody Kriya Yoga. And at that time, it was impossible for me even to dream or to imagine that I, I will teach one day. At that time in 90s, I actually was uh, already kind of yoga teacher. And I conducted some classes, but it was about Hatha Yoga, Pranayama, some basic mantras. And I remember that in the 90s, I was doing a lot of puja rituals to Sai Baba. But it was not Kriya Yoga, meditation and Bija Mantra tradition. And in the end of 90s, uh, my Kriya Yoga guru, Yogi Rama, who was direct disciple of Mahavatar Babaji and Goraknath and Nagaraj Babaji. So he was learning himself from different uh, immortal Mahatmas uh, from Himalayas. So he told me that, okay, uh, now you are not ready, but one day you will start to teach. And actually he told me this in the end of 90s and it was kind of shock for me because you know now what's happened in the modern spirituality each and every one start to teach Kriya Yoga but even in that time um, it was not like that to, to, to teach Kriya Yoga it was a huge step unimaginable and actually I experienced something it was 2011 when I understood because of certain inner experiences that, okay, now it's a time to make small steps, step by step, and to start teach people Kriya Yoga, Bija Mantra, and write and publish books. And actually my first few books I, I wrote and published at that time, 2000. 11, 12, 14, like that. And, um, okay, um, you know, what, um, mm, you know, sometimes people proclaim themselves as the great gurus. Sometimes people afraid to say openly, okay, I'm guru. Both are strange, okay. To proclaim yourself as a great guru uh, I mean, uh, who are you? I mean, if we have Mahatar Babaji in Himalayas or Goraknath in Himalayas, if we have a Sai Baba, then I mean, who can call himself a great guru in front of real great masters? But at the same time, to play this tricky game that, okay, okay, I'm not guru, I'm not guru. That's also funny because if if people teach, if people publish books, if people make videos, that's itself put us 
people like me in the position of guru. And, and that's not the question to be afraid to say, yes, I'm guru. That's not the question. The question is what kind of guru and what we may understand about being guru. And, um, you know, the, of course, the perfect example for me was my guru, Yogi Ramech. Um, and, um, um, you know, um, he was more like friend. He was really empty, you know. He was just pointing to certain philosophical teachings and... Um, let us say he was pointing to the importance to practice meditation he was just giving instruction but his approach was like okay he's a good friend and in india it's a tradition if you just touch feet of the somebody who is older than you when i came to his ashram i was something like 21 and he was something like 75. But he was not let people to touch his feet. Okay, sometimes he could let, but it was really just only sometimes. And it was impossible even to put his picture, his photo, and worship to that. Because uh, he was very angry if he come to know about this. And it's absolutely traditional in India, even in Christian tradition, if you have a spiritual father and you put his picture on the wall, it's it's okay for the Buddhist, Hindu, Jewish and Christian tradition. But it was not okay for Yogi Rama because he was empty and his point was that this absolute reality is inside you and with the help of meditation you have chance just chance to discover this uh, eternal light absolute consciousness inside your midbrain inside your spiritual heart inside your fontanel inside your inside your spine if you will not practice meditation then you don't have even chance so meditation is important. And then self-inquiry, practical self-inquiry, because what's happened uh, quite often, people just learn philosophy, and then there's a tricky thing that if I read book, and I'm not a stupid idiot, I mean read book and understand, then okay, like I read book, I understood the meaning, then I'm enlightened. That's what's happened. But re actual experience, this is crucial question. And by the way, many new age spiritual traditions, they hate this question, question about actual experience, because most of them don't have one. And if somebody asks any modern new age guru about actual experience, they laugh, they say, okay, it's your ego trick, you're already absolute consciousness. But you know, that's, that's the question. Actual experience. You may call it in any way. Okay, just I say actual experience, so you may say state of consciousness. Choose any word you like, but actual experience is nice way to explain the point. But, and, um, you know, Yogi Rama, he was just speaking about Vedanta, sometimes Siddhanta, South Indian philosophy. Yes, a couple of times he was wonderfully gave me instruction in a Gnostic mystical Christianity because he was also expert in Christian tradition as well. He was Hindu. He was born as Hindu and he was Hindu. But because second half of his life he spent in the United States, he was learning a lot of about mystical Christianity because for him it was really interesting that in the beginning of Christian um, uh, tradition, actually people practiced meditation in the first few centuries, you know, and um, 
And so he was empty. So it means that's that's important to be empty, to be just friend, and just then point to the importance of self inquiry, point to the importance of meditation, and um, as we just spoke before this um, discussion, this satsang. Yeah, many people just learn meditation one month, then next month they say, I'm already enlightened. But people go to the South Indian great place, which is Arunachala Mountain, to the Ramana uh, Maharsha Ashram, they just go there, meditate half an hour, and then they say, I'm enlightened. But, you know, all that um, things are not nice, but... Um, um, and people say, okay, now we're living in a new age when people easily receive, experience this. But, you know, the difference is that alternate state of consciousness, some slightly mystical experiences of peace, bliss, oneness, some just drops of experiences. They mix it with the real, actual experience, which is never easy. Forget about easy, forget about quick. It's not possible in any field, including, okay, we can speak about financial questions, self-healing, whatever. You know, quick solution is fake. 